All right, here we go. This is going to be our big project for the course. So I hope you ate your Wheaties because you're going to need your energy to get through all of this. Here's what our system's going to be. Basically, it's going to start off sounding really, really simple. We've got a tank. We've got our famous tank. We love tanks. This tank has a level. This tank also has a temperature. And this tank has a few different devices. It's got a pump pumping into the tank. It's got a valve discharging from the tank. And then it's got a mixer inside of the tank, which just basically stirs whatever's inside of it. So that's it. That's all that we've really got. You know, that should be pretty simple stuff, right? But, you know, I, I like to spruce things up a little bit and make it fun. So here's what we're going to do. Our machine is going to have five different operating states. It can either be offline, it can be initializing, which is when it's basically just resetting its values. So that's a hiccup. That's not even, you know, uh, it doesn't even spend any time there really. Then it can be in startup mode. And in startup mode, what it's doing is basically warming itself up and getting ready to actually run. Then it can be in operation, which is normal running mode. And then it can be in a stability mode, which basically means something's gone wrong. We've had some kind of alarm, and now the system is trying to fix itself. And once it fixes itself, then we can figure out where we want it to go from there. But ideally, we're going to send this thing back, and it's going to reestablish itself and return to normal operation. So that is all going to be controlled in an SFC, which makes sense because, you know, we have a progression of steps that we're going to be following pretty much all the time with, you know, only a couple of variations. And that's the perfect environment to do that kind of programming. But then if you remember in an SFC, you can click into any one of those stages or any one of those steps and then you can decide what kind of paradigm you're going to use. So for us, we're going to use different paradigms for pretty much all of these. When we're offline, we want to control what happens in there using a ladder diagram. And you say, well, not much happens offline. <laughs> and that's true. That's why we're using our most familiar paradigm where we need it the very least. So that's going to force us to use all these other new paradigms a lot more in this program than what we're doing with ladder diagrams. So then in our initialization, we're going to use function block diagrams. For startup, we want to go ahead and use structured text. For operation, we want to use a CFC. And then when we get to stability, we're going to use our favorite instruction list. While we're doing this, setting up those modes, you know, that's fine. But then we've got a lot of detail as far as what's going on inside of each one of these modes. And there's a lot of different things that have to happen along the way that we need to take into consideration. There are certain alarms that we want. Those alarms need to do certain things. We have certain limits that we want to look at. We also want to simulate our analogs that are coming into this system. So we know we've got a temperature and a level. Well, we actually want to write some code that's going to make those change over time. And then we want to be able to change and control the way that those affect the system to watch the system automatically respond and do all kinds of things like that. So by the time we're done, we're actually going to have a system up and running and cycling itself automatically. And that's going to be on account of the program that we're about to write, which is going to span all these different paradigms. Mind you, unnecessarily, you pretty much never need to write a program using all those different paradigms, but it's great to know how. It's great to be able to demonstrate that you're capable of working in them all. And that's the whole purpose of this project. So there's a lot of details. Pay attention. I've given you a spec sheet which spells everything out. I would highly suggest that you read through it once, twice, probably three times before you really get started programming. 
and then you go back and read through it two or three more times after that because I don't want you to get too far down a wild tangent and then have to come back, delete a bunch of stuff you already did, and rewrite it another way. But, um, you know, just pay attention to the spec while you're programming. That's how you have to do it in real life. You, you can't just program what you want, come back, and then ask the customer what they actually need. <laughs> so, you know, watch this, pay attention, do what it says, try to create a system that, you know, actually works the way it's described. There might be some details that are left out. So you might be, you know, get to a point where you ask a question, hey, you know, do you want it to do A or B? It doesn't say in the spec sheet. Well, if it doesn't say in the spec sheet, be creative. Do what you want it to do. That's obviously not something that, you know, is defined, so it's not something that's really important. You can do whatever you want if it doesn't say otherwise. But just, you know, once you've got everything done and working, go back through one more time, check the spec sheet, and make sure that, yes, everything that it says in here is in my program and it works as described. You don't have to send it to me. You don't have to say, Paul, you know, check all thousand or two thousand of our projects. Uh, I can't do that. I don't have that much time in life. But, you know, that's why I'm giving you this check. Make sure it does what it's supposed to do. If it does, congratulations. You've got a working project. If it doesn't, keep at it. Struggle with it a little bit. That's what's going to make you a better programmer. So, with that, you've got everything you need, you know everything, you've got all the techniques, you're familiar with all the paradigms by now. It'll take you a little bit of time, it'll be a bit of a headache, but you should be able to create this program. Once you're done, don't cheat, don't get ahead of yourself, but once you're done, once you've got everything good to go, jump into the next lecture and it's going to take me a while too, I'm sure, but I'm going to start programming these things out as well. So. I'll see you then.